The way we consume and share news today is largely rooted in social media outlets. Now, the reason why it is crucial that we look at what's being discussed online, from the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media minute, we are joined by Erica Park. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, we're going to lead off with some BTS <clears throat> news. Um, BTS, a member of BTS, is currently in South America, more specifically in Argentina. And this is creating a lot of buzz with the BTS army in the region. Uh, lots of uh, big crowds, lineups, just to get a glimpse of uh, the member. Yeah. So it was announced last weekend that uh, Jin will debut his uh, new solo single before he uh, heads off to the army. Uh, the single is titled The Astronaut. And uh, yeah, he he is going to debut the, the song at the Coldplay concert in Buenos Aires on October 28th local time or 29th Saturday here, Korea time. Now, Jin actually co-wrote the song with Coldplay. Now, as soon as uh, fans in Argentina uh, heard the news that Jin was already on the plane headed over to Buenos Aires, uh, they headed straight to the airport to welcome uh, their global idol. Now, literally a sea of fans had gathered at the airport in time for his arrival. Uh, Jin arrived surprised by just how many fans were there. There were thousands. Uh, and he feared that they were, there might be, you know, a bit of pandemonium chaos. So he used a private exit. And uh, for this, he later ap apologized on social media uh, for using this private exit and not being able to greet them all. Uh, even a portion of the road was blocked to allow Jin and his entourage to safely exit the airport grounds. That's how crazy it was at the airport. And uh, since his arrival, Jin has been talking to his fans on social media. Uh, he's been asking them for recommendations, among many things, on what to eat in Argentina. Of course, as expected, um, Argentinian steak was one of the most popular recommendations. Uh, and uh, ahead of the highly anticipated concert, Coldplay even dropped a preview of the new song uh, with Chris Martin singing along. That Rolling Stone magazine exclusively uh, premiered photos and videos of Coldplay and Jin rehearsing together at the concert venue. It looked like a huge stadium. Uh, now they were shared as well. Uh, the, the clip, I'm not sure if we're streaming right now because I'm not there, uh, it captures Jin smiling and high-fiving Chris Martin and gives fans their first look at uh, sort of the galaxy-like uh, visuals set uh, to appear on screen during the show. Yes, and, uh, we are indeed streaming images yeah. and video of uh, Jin's rehearsal right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you guys could check that out uh, through YouTube. The uh, audio has been muted, though, so you can't live, hear the song yet. Right, well, right. We'll singing it anyway on the stage. Yeah. Right. We'll let that uh, the actual sound, the song, be heard for the first time at the concert as yeah. they uh, planned. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, when we're talking about BTS and Jin, we have to briefly mention uh, the military service as he's turning 30 uh, this December, right? Yes. Yeah, um, he's uh, going to join the military very soon. Uh, this is probably going to be his last large-scale concert uh, meeting with his fans. Now, Coldplay understands the significance of all of this because uh, they were the ones who actually reached out to Jin and uh, you know they, they said, hey, do you want to perform at our concert in uh, Argentina on October 28th? And uh, obviously Jin said yes. So Coldplay is going to live stream their show across more than 80 countries on Friday and Saturday. Uh, for those of you who are thinking, huh, when did uh, BTS and Coldplay get so chummy? Well, they struck a friendship uh, several years ago, and uh, BTS members were featured on Coldplay's song, My Universe. Right. Uh, not too long ago. It's yeah. it's still kind of surreal to have um, these Korean artists and these, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I mean, the Korean artists themselves are a global phenomenon as well. But yeah. to see them collaborate and have Coldplay reach out to you and be like, hey, you guys, yeah. wanna, you guys want to work together on a song like that. Would, that's just amazing. And uh, exactly. And then uh, having just droves of fans just block roads and 
clog up the airport just to get a glimpse of you. Yeah, exactly. Um, Coldplay uh, and BTS uh, Hybe has been, uh, they've, they've both been uh, actively sharing the social media interactions, the text messages, you know, going back and forth between Chris Martin and Jin. And they're calling each other my brother. So, uh, you know, they've definitely become close. That's for sure. And I think it's a great marketing strategy as well for both. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. that does absolutely play into yeah. uh, a big part of this. Of course. Okay, uh, the second story, uh, commodity prices are rising. You, you know, I went to a convenience store yesterday just to grab just a ice cream. Yeah, I know. The thing was 2001. Yep, yep. And uh, uh, not only ice cream, but menu prices everywhere, whether you're going to go get a kimbap. You know, just yeah. a roll of kimbap used to be, I don't know, a couple of years ago, <coughs> maybe 1,500 won, 2,000 won. Now it's like 4,500 won, 5,000 won. Right? Yeah, 4,000, 5,000 won. Things have gotten expensive. You mentioned ice cream. Um, I recently, you know, was pretty surprised. I mean, we've been talking about how prices, food prices have been going up, and I knew. But um, yeah, like a, a single ice cream, a, a cone costs like 2,000 won and upwards. Well, so. ye yesterday's one was a little bit, there was a consolation because it was a two plus or one plus one deal. Right, buy okay. one get one free deal. Yep. So yep. I purchased it and I gave it to the person at the counter. But oh, um, that's very nice of you. I mean, but it's still expensive, outrageous, right? Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. why I I tend to with my daughters we go to the you know these those unmanned ice cream shops. Yeah, very popular. You, you get bargain prices at those places. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. well, but anyways, speaking of snacks, pungopang, which is a very popular street snack in Korea. The prices of those is basically giving everybody a wake-up call on the rising commodity prices here. Yeah. Sometimes it's the price hike of some of the cheapest things we uh, could get that really is a wake-up mm. call, like you just said. So a pungapang is a popular winter street uh, snack here in South Korea. It's a fish-shaped bread, uh, sort of sweet. It has a, a red bean filling inside. These days, it comes with all sorts of other uh, fillings, including uh, custard cream. And anyway, it's a popular snack here. And, uh, you know, everyone loves pungopang because it's cheap, it's delicious. And uh, since the 30s, uh, the snack has been uh, popular here. It's evolved uh, over the many decades, uh, like I mentioned. I think the most, the, the strangest uh, pungopang filling that I've seen is uh, one filled with kimchi. I mean, pizza, I guess it makes sense, right? Um, sweet potato is another one that I've seen mm. uh, walking on the streets. Anyways, um, yeah, the thing with the pungopang is that uh, with, as with so many other things, including ice cream that you just mentioned, is getting more and more expensive to make because everything, all the ingredients, the raw materials have gotten so costly. And uh, this means that for street vendors, uh, it's getting harder and harder to stay in business. So I'm not a huge Pungapang fan, but if mm -hmm. I do eat it, I like the traditional one with the sweet yep. red bean paste inside. Yes. Uh, but yep. uh, how much is it these days when you try to go find well, it? Okay, let me make a comparison. Before COVID, mm -hmm. a bag of four pungopang, sometimes even more, depending mm -hmm. on the stall, would cost 1,000 won. Okay. Uh, but since early last year, stands have been raising prices, offering two for 1,000 won. And these days, it's not uncommon to find stalls that sell one single pungopang. They're not that big. They're about this this big. Mm -hmm. Sell a single pungopang for 1,000 won. And the consumers are going, what is going on here? Yeah, if you're curious to what we're talking about, you could uh, yeah. check out our stream. We're streaming pictures of the pungopang snacks on our uh, live stream on YouTube. Um, another thing, just a little bit of a cultural tangential side note. Mm -hmm. We say when someone looks exactly like you know, their father or mother, when a child looks exactly like their father or mother, you say, yeah. oh, 완전 엄마 붕어빵이네. Oh, you look just like your mom or you're yes. 완전 아빠 붕어빵이네, right? You look just like your dad because they're, they come out of these metal molds That's and right. they look exactly the same, every single one of these snacks. That's right. So just a, just a little cultural side note there. <laughs> but awesome. going back to the price of the commodities, um, Pungopang is another is a popular snack. Hot dog is another one that you'll find yeah. on the streets, especially during wintertime here in South Korea. Mm -hmm. And I could only imagine the prices of hot dogs are rising as yeah. well. 
Uh, hot dog is facing the same fate as well, if not worse, because a hot dog many times contains nuts. And right. uh, I regularly purchase nuts for my mm -hmm. restaurant, like pine nuts and cashew nuts. And oh my goodness, the price of nuts is through the roof. It's so expensive. Right. Um, yep. Okay. And, uh, you know, gas. Is of expensive. course, gas prices have gone up. Everything from red beans, cooking oil, flour, milk, margarine, everything uh, is expensive and these vegetables, days. fresh vegetables in Korea right now, just because uh, the big monsoon rains that uh, the farmers had to deal with. Yep. Everything is getting more expensive these That's days. Right. Okay. So you know what consumers are doing these days? Yeah, what's I mean, going they're, on? They're using social media to share information uh, about the price of pungopang sold in different neighborhood uh, snack stalls. So um, residents around the Mapugu, Sodemungu, and Umkyonggu areas uh -huh. uh, have been sharing, and the average price of uh, the pungopang around these areas cost about one thousand won for two. Stalls in the Gangnamgu area cost more, upwards of six hundred won per piece. Okay, well, I live in Sodemun, so <laughs> I get a bargain on Pungopang. Yay! <laughs> yeah, another way to kind of fight that uh, uh, the uh, uptrend in commodity prices is yeah. I find that traditional markets still tend to uh, have the lowest price possible for fresh produce yeah. if you are willing to look a little bit and kind of shop around and bargain down with the vendors. You know what's another trend, actually? Well, before we jump on to the next story, yeah. is people are buying these uh, pungopang mixes, you know. And making them uh, at home? They're making them at home. They have molds for to make at home? I know. How do they How do they make them at home? I'm so curious. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you got you to gotta maybe make one. Make that into a dessert <laughs> at your restaurant. Maybe. Filled with, uh, I don't know, Nutella. <laughs> filled with Nutella. There you go. Yeah, because we're Italian restaurant. Absolutely. Yep. That sounds delicious. <laughs> Okay, uh, so there's been a recent trend in Korea where uh, people have been moving to the rural areas on purpose. Uh, I know one of, uh, I think, a mutual friend. Do you know Yeri? Yeri's, yes, of yes. course. So she just yeah. recently, she was a broadcaster here in Arirang and other mm -hmm. broadcast stations about a decade yeah. ago. But um, she actually moved her family to a very rural part of Korea. Oh, where did she go? Oh, am she, I not supposed to talk well, about I mean, she, I, on air? No, no, I think she, well, I'm not exactly sure, but I think she went to the very southern tip of South Korea. And, wow. and the elementary school that her kids attend, I think they have like an average class size of like six. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, that right. which is related to our next story. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, the dwindling population in the rural areas in Korea have cause the schools, the public schools, to get a little creative when uh, conducting their traditional fall outings. That's right. You know, every month for, I don't know, for, for the past two years, I've been seeing an article every month in the newspaper with the title, Record Low Number of Births. You know, South Korea's population decline has been making headline news for a while now. And this is really bleak news for the society as a whole because it has a wide range of implications. But today we're going to talk about a very real problem that these small scale schools in rural areas face. And that is that the number of new students enrolling is declining every year. And many schools, as a result, uh, have been forced to shut their doors because there simply aren't enough students. Mm. And um, yeah, you know what? Before we actually jump to the actual story, have you ever attended a uh, school here in Korea? Joanne? Yes, I am uh, a proud, I wouldn't say graduate because I immigrated, but I attended Koon mm -hmm. at that time, Kungmin Hakkyo in Hongjedong. Uh -huh. Now it's Koon oh, Chodung Hakkyo. Um, so I, I went to first grade there. And I went to so second grade in. Um, Shindebangdong. I can't remember mm -hmm. the name of the school, though. But anyways, right. yes, I did attend the K Korean public school, elementary school, and I did partake so, in these uh, sports days. Yeah. Which is basically a sports day. Yeah. Uh, uh, for schools here in South Korea. And they usually take place in the fall because the weather is so nice, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it's among the many things that kids look forward to in the school calendar. But these days, elementary schools can't afford to host sports days because of the very problem that we've just been talking about, lack of students. 
recently, uh, eight elementary schools in Tamyang, in Cheolanamdo province, decided to get creative, to get together, to jointly host a sports day. So it not only brought together students from all of these different schools, but the parents as well, our relatives, and even the local community, members of the local community. And uh, this is great because not only was it a great networking opportunity for everybody involved, but it really highlighted the need to form a consensus that uh, conscientious efforts must be made to make these schools more sustainable, you know, and for this to happen, entire communities have to work together to, you know, figure this out. And apparently this uh, year's sports day was a huge success and uh, Tamyang is going to host, uh, co-host again with these eight, maybe more schools next year, uh, again next year. I mean, the fall festival, sports festival, like you said, is basically the highlight of the year for younger elementary school students. So much fun. And the thing is, it, when there are more kids, you can do more activities. Absolutely. You know? And, uh, you know, not only are the kids participating, but there's the parent races, right? <laughs> so there are those yep. dads who are like, okay, I got to, you know, show it up. I got to, you know, showcase exactly. my talents for my kids, you know? Yeah. So, you know, the families come together. Uh, back then, mom used to always pack the kimbap and of you course. go and you compare the kimbap. Oh, my mom put this in my kimbap and your yeah. mom put that in the kimbap. But, but I, you know so well. I I, far, I partook in all of that. It was uh, yeah. great memories. I still have pictures in my sports album, or not Same sports here. album, but photo album. Same here. <laughs> okay, well, Yerika, it's been a fun two weeks talking with you each and every yeah, morning. Likewise. All right, and one well, have a great weekend, and I'll come you by too. and uh, of course uh, say hi to you at your restaurant. <laughs> Thank you. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.